what is important to me. And each time that there's an election, I like to be able to get out there and express what I feel is right. Um, I think there's many issues uh, affecting women today, especially in the last several years, that I feel when I walk in to that booth and am able to check what I feel is right, that it's important that we all do that. Um, it, once again, I am able to express my, um, my beliefs, uh, what I feel is right, and also the, uh, the freedom to do that in this country. Welcome back. You know, our, our speaker, uh, who just was sharing her point of view, mentioned several times that uh, made reference to the privilege of being in this particular country. And I wondered if you had any thoughts on that. You want to take that one, Amy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think if you look around um, the population of our county and look at women, there's a multitude of cultures, there's a multitude of tradition. Um, see women still covering their heads and faces, women that, that bring that tradition and that love for that with them that maybe um, other women couldn't understand. Um, we have a lot of a lot of diversity and so in terms of you know personal empowerment it's really important that that we each look at what our own needs and issues are and bring those to the right. forefront um, and that can be very different for different people with many different experiences and culture and and time and our society changes people in different ways that are leave some of us more you know, available to that than others. Um, if someone's never had the chance to speak up in their family, it's pretty hard to feel like, well, hey, I really want to be involved in this issue about welfare because I have the right to do that. And um, in other countries, people don't. Women don't get to say women maybe can't, can't be involved or can't speak in the church or can't look at someone eye to eye. Mm. There's, there's a lot of barriers. So there's really then, it takes some time to make that transition into seeing yourself as someone who really has that right, even though legally you do. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. There, there is a whole another level to that, isn't there? Right. Okay. And the, the other thing is, is that, you know, I see that because we do have that right in this country, we also have a responsibility. We are one of the privileged countries in the world. And, um, and because we have such a diversity in this country, um, we have a responsibility to really speak up and like the like the speaker um, in your the woman from in your words was talking about you know it's it's like we have responsibility to go there and cast our vote to say what we think is right you know to speak for the voiceless women the silent women you know the invisible women because the things that are happening in our country are happening in other countries too but they're happening in our country and there are people in our country that for whatever reason and there's many of them that aren't voting now, um, one opportunity we have to learn more about uh, the political arena and the different candidates, I think, is going to be coming up in September, mm -hmm. isn't it? Can you tell us a little about that? Yeah, the, we, uh, the, the League of Women Voters is going to be having a candidate night at the Jewish Community Center um, on, I think it's Oka Road yeah. in uh, Los Gatos, which is off of Lark, and it's, uh, I think it's September 9th. So. so September 9th, the Jewish Community Center, get a chance. And I believe it's candidates both, and we, we saw the little animals here. We have the Democrats and Republicans it's bipartisan, represented, yeah, they're so not, it is yeah. bipartisan, and right. you get a chance to really take a look at the whole thing. And you're also, um, I think, going to be having a speaker at San Jose City College, yeah. I think, aren't you, at some point? Yeah, yeah, the Women's Political Forum is going to be held at San Jose City College on Friday night from, I think it's 5.30 to 7 p.m., and um, it's uh, That's November 1st. November Friday, November 1st. Right before the election. Right, a week before the election. Then we're going to have um, we're going to have a speaker from the League of Women Voters there, and we'll also have um, some pro and con sheets that are published through the the uh, state um, League of Women Voters. The state. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so they'll be there, and we'll be giving those out. And um, we'll all, w the Women's Recovery Roundtable is also developing a template okay. for issues that are happening in the county. Um, and so I think that there will be a lot there. Um, there will be a lot going on there. I think it will be a very interesting and informative night. Okay. So one of the ways we could keep informed is to get involved with Women's Roundtable, couldn't we? Mm. And what number could we call to find out about that? Or actually, the meetings are uh, the uh, fourth, when, what is it, fourth Thursday of the every month? The second Thursday of second every month. Second Thursday of every month. Yeah. Okay. And, um, and the, they're held at the Recovery Bookshop Cafe, which is on uh, South Bascom. And for more information, you can call 
296-5771. Okay. And, that, and you can leave a voicemail and someone will get back to you. Okay. That. Fabulous. Okay. Well, let's take a look at the next few reasons why women should vote. Because women have experience which would be helpful to legislation, because to deprive women of the vote is to lower their position in common estimation. I love that sentence. Mm -hmm. And because having the vote would increase the sense of responsibility among women toward questions of public importance. Um, I have to review the sentence that I love here. Um, uh, because to deprive women of the vote is to lower their position in common estimation. And part of the argument was there was uh, that to treat them um, uh, without the vote is to um, rob them of some of their dignity. And that, in fact, for us to have the status of equality um, required us to have a say. And one of the ways we could have a say is to have a vote. Um, so do you think that, in your experience, women who vote on a regular basis do have a sense of self-empowerment because they do that? Has that been your experience? I think it definitely is motivational, and I think that's probably true for anybody. If there's something in the election that I'm concerned about, I'm more likely to get out there and, and um, pay attention to it and learn about it and want to make a decision that I feel comfortable with. Uh, for instance, Proposition 187 brought a lot of voters that hadn't normally been registered or voted in our county, and um, hopefully that will continue to happen on issues. I think, I think it's been a that just as an example has kind of stirred people to be more passionate about what they believe. Okay. And certainly for women, um, sometimes the issues aren't brought up and when they recognize them, I think that's definitely more motivational towards voting and towards being involved. You okay. pay attention when the news is on and if that passed or not or what someone else said about it and right. are they an ally, is that someone that, that has my issues in heart, okay. someone that can relate. Okay. So really recognizing what, what impacts me and what doesn't. So in some ways, it almost helps to put a face or a uh, face or a name of someone familiar attached to each of these issues. Like when I think about, there's two upcoming ones in the county um, about um, HMO reform and patient advocacy rights and that sort of thing and being able to picture uh, people I know that are part of that HMO system definitely creates an emotional response that allows me to care about that issue. And plus, you work in that arena. I mean, yes. that affects your livelihood. I think I want to bring it back to that. It's that, you know, I mean, not in my backyard. You know, that whole, that whole, um, that, that whole issue about things that happen in my community. Um, you know, I, I, if, I, if you can connect it to me and my family, then I'm going to get out there and make a difference. You know, I'm going to get out there and let my voice be heard. You know, there's something going on in San Jose right now where they're talking about recovery homes and where they can be and where they can't be. And, you know, neighbors are getting uh, less tolerant. And so there's a critical issue that's happening. It's brewing right along. And uh, Joan Gallo's out there doing her thing from, you know, the city um, of San Jose. And it's like it's going to affect people that are looking, um, that are in recovery that need a place to go, a safe place to go. And so I'm watching that and I'm certainly, um, you know, um, it's gotten my attention and I'm certainly watching where I could get involved and, you know, because it's not only going to affect my livelihood, but it's going to affect my um, community. And I think the other thing we mentioned earlier about personal recovery, I think there's a real tie there. If I feel myself being moved to that, that I'm angry because, you know, a women's residential recovery program was was not approved in the last election or you know outlawed by by a community group that didn't want it to happen then I might feel something about it and then maybe I'll get more involved so it's like in addition to watching our own personal recovery we learn to watch the recovery of that what's going on around right. us because we are it and it is us right. and I think that's that's part of the message of the women's movement and if you can say that um, that women becoming more involved have illustrated that there's a lot out there happening and lots of times people compete for that interest and if no one hears about it they don't know. That's right. That's right. If you don't speak it's assumed you don't care. Let's take a look at the next few uh, reasons. You'll see nine. Because public spirited mothers make public spirited sons and I added daughters. I could not help myself. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Because about 8 million women in the United States are wage workers and the conditions under which they work are controlled by law. I found that figure interesting. So in uh, 1915, we had 8 million women who wow. were working uh, out in the community. And at that point, they were working in factories and um, places like that. So we, right. you know, we weren't talking about CEOs, certainly. And we're certainly not now talking right. about CEOs. That's right. um, but 
and that in fact um, voting and looking at legislature does impact us economically as well as spiritually. I mean, there's, a, there's an important concrete reason to show up. Let's take a look at the last two, because I want to make sure we hit these all. The 11, because the objections against their having the vote are based on prejudice, not on reason. And 12, because to sum up all reasons in one, it is for the common good of all. Okay, so we'll hit those last four. I want to make sure everybody was aware of them. In terms of public-spirited mothers make public-spirited children, there is something to that, is there not? Yeah, there yeah. is. I mean, you know, we learn from our parents. I mean, if they're, if they're involved, if they're out there. Um, I was just reading an article about um, Supervisor Gonzalez and about his father, who was very involved with um, labor unions and, and sp uh, he wor you know, worked, went to the school district. And that's how he became exposed to, um, you know, um, politics. And, and so, you know, there's an example, you know, a public-spirited father, you know, encouraged a public-spirited son. I mean, women who are out in the community, they take their children with them. It's not like there's someone else there to care for them. They take their, because their husbands are working, and, you know, they take their you know, children with them, and their children see, you know, and maybe they don't, they don't have a husband, and they're single moms, and they, you know what I mean? It's like the w women are the caregivers of the children for the most part. And I don't mean that to be, you know, stereotypical, for, right. but for the most part. And so where mom goes, baby goes, you know, and, um, and away we go with our life. And so they're watching and learning all of this. And okay. I think the more... So the role modeling is definitely, yes. definitely important. And I would think, too, uh, even as a, a county worker or with your client load, I mean, sort of, um, I know that in places where we work, you know, we can have uh, information available, uh, registration cards available. We mm -hmm. can have indications that in this particular working environment that this office, this organization um, um, acknowledges that there's a community connection that we're part of that I think really does in, uh, encourage our clients to think in that, that way also. We are going to need to close. I want to thank you so much for being here. The time passed very quickly. Uh, thank you for joining us. In the upcoming weeks, we'll examine career transition and dating in the 90s. I'm Mary Crocker Cook. Good night. Mm -hmm.